Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good point. So anyone that um, misses part of the AMAs, whether it's on Twitter or on Discord, you can watch the full episodes on the YouTube channel. So make sure you guys subscribe, turn the notifications on, um, and let's get started. Uh, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to a brand new episode of Discord AMA. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into CyberLeads technology. Uh, Stolte and Jeff will be demonstrating some of their products with us here today and explaining to us how these applications play a part in the CyberLead ecosystem. So Stolt, Jeff, really happy to be here. Um, so guys, uh, take us through some of the different applications that will be available from CyberLead. So first main thing is, you know, our application itself uh, for the gamers is social interoperability, uh, the platform, which people are able to, you know, create friends, join leagues, play games together. Um, and then we have the anti-cheat part, which is, you know, super important because that's the one thing that platforms are not offering right now is an anti-cheat. And when they do, it's subpar. What kind of things are people going to be able to find on the cyberleap.net once it goes live? And do we have a timeline on when this will be available? Mm. Open soon on the timeline. And this is an example. Uh, this is like our MVP for model of the site. This is basics that we needed to get going. <clears throat> like for example, you got player of the week here, Joe. Um, we actually hacked our system. I got him a, a free account. That's how this profile got here. Um, which actually, you know, you just go to beta.cyberleague.net and sign up. But warning, we are decoupling the server and uh, putting it on another space here shortly. So profiles will be lost. Um, if it wasn't, there's that. Disclaimer, this isn't uh, on a server that's going to handle many users. It's a very generic server. Okay, so so obviously you guys are saying that it's going to get a, a little facelift in the UI design, but looking at the functionality, it seems like it has a lot of really cool features. Um, you have the option to create a team. Um, you guys have group messaging within the team. Um, So if, if people were to create a team here and they wanted to go play a game, how, how does that work? So if you wanted to create a team, it's as simple as coming up here. You know, you log into your account and you click create a team. And you just say you want to name it Cyberly2. You put the password in. Now you have a team. Um, and then from here, say you want to play in a, a Rocket League. So you can join the open division. Open division, anyone is able to join the game, <clears throat> the league. Um, you go back and you see there's amateur, intermediate. Um, you'd have to win open to play in the uh, amateur or intermediate. And uh, so there's like qualifications to get into these other leagues, but open, anyone can join, create a team. And on my side, I get a notification. So like, like on my side, there's a notification that comes in and then I can join. So I joined. So now you can refresh and now I'm there. Um, and it, there's like this interaction that goes on. Uh, so you can easily join these teams, easily find teams, easily start teams to join the tournaments that we're going. And we're, and we want it to be as easy as possible for open division. We don't want anybody to have to wait around and fit. Like, we want you to read the rules, figure out the rules, understand the rules of the leagues, essentially, and then easy to join them, easy to join the leagues um, and participate. So this is essentially like the hub meeting spot before you and your friends uh, jump into a game. You guys meet up here, talk about what's going on, uh, maybe catch up on um, 
how everybody's day was, go over the rules, what game you guys are going to play. So this is that hub. And from here, you guys move on to uh, the actual game you guys are going to play. Yes. So say it's any one of the games that are out there that have a competitive nature. So it doesn't matter if it's CSGO. It doesn't matter if it's doesn't matter the game. It, it could it could be solitaire that you guys play for points and you guys rate the points and whoever has more points, less points, whatever it is, you, you join uh, or you win or that it just depends on the people that want it. Now, so, is there like a ranking system or like trophy system or anything that goes into people's uh, user profiles or different tiers or levels? Um, yes. So inside of Cyberly, there's the, the tiers are open, intermediate, um, amateur, main, uh, pro and invite or invite and pro. I'm not a hundred. I, I think I, there's just a, there's a group of tiers. I think there's seven and you have to participate through open and all these tiers to get to pro. You can't just be pro. You can't just meet the right people and be pro. There's, there's dynamic to it. There's team dynamic, meaning if, Say you like you have a team and you replace a bunch of members, you're not a pro team anymore. It's more about the team and not about the individuals. It's more about the people participating as a collective, earning these goals. Um, this on the stream is kind of what the the league structure looks like. You know, on this first round, everyone's in here. Um, we're doing more than it's not single limit, but so you go through here. Obviously, you know point is get to the winner spot the final two play here that's the winner and uh that's how our rating our ranking system is, is for uh the team the players will be individually rated among their stats but this is for the team yeah i guess the peace of mind that players get when they use this hub uh to find teams to play with um essentially you know that the people that you're competing against or playing on teams with aren't cheating because i'm assuming that all the games that are that are going to be available on this site will they be having the cyber elite ai running in the background yes for the most part so it, yeah so if you if you want to play on. casually if you just want to play casual game Overwatch, you know, you get it in here and you invite your friends and you're all grouped up. Which you can do this inside of Overwatch too. But if you have the Cyber Lead app open, um, you're able to verify if people in your the server also had the Cyber Lead app open. And it's kind of like a way to say, you know, prove that you're not cheating. Well, you can prove that you're not cheating by being on the Cyber Lead app. And so if I know you're on the Cyber Lead app, I know you're not cheating could essentially just play with people that are only on the Cyber Elite app. That way you just know that everyone you're playing with is playing honestly, right? Yes. Yep. Um, but so you give the option of both because not everybody's going to get to jump on the, the wagon right away. So you, the reality is, is you give the option of both and then uh, the re like Cyber Elite's going to verify our users. We're going to make sure people are doing what they say they're doing. They're following rules. Um, and, and they're helping essentially with their data and we're teaching them to be datapreneurs. So it's, it's a, it's a lot that goes on there. I also want to show there real quick, uh, Stolte, can you go back to your profile? And then you can go into edit right there, the edit profile button, and he can change his profile picture already, his gamer handles, um, update his password, this and, and uh, like upload a clip right to his profile that goes into the site. Now these features are like live, they do work it. And I can't wait for them to like the algorithms and stuff like that to like show the top clips based on views and stuff like that based on everybody uploading. And um, it, yet again, another easy function for the web, the website for our profile for the user now. So to be able to update now in the future, um, little alpha web three stuff, you will be able to sign in like your wallet and sign in to your favorite NFT and sign in right there with your NFT and put your NFT there and you'll get like a different type of icon instead of a circle and pretty cool, but little utility. 
And the upload the clip is simple. Like we make it really simple. If you pull off really cool, you know, play in a game and you're not recording, it's okay. You can press a button and we have you back. We have you back. We, we have the last few minutes recorded. Uh, and then you're able to click upload, click, clip, uh, find the clip and upload it. It's already, it's already ready for you to go. Cool. Can, so, you guys, can you guys summarize for the audience? Okay, so, you know, if I wanted to play a game with my friends, right, we could just go to Epic Games, meet in the lounge, start up a game. Why is this important? And how does this play into the current gaming situation um, and the different use cases? Can you guys summarize that up for the audience? Okay. Are you saying that you're playing casually with your friend and you just... So yeah, why would I why would I use this? This is you use this to secure like you know you're playing with a secure user base. So you're gonna see people saying, you know, I don't believe you did that play unless you done done it in the way. Um so you might be in the game and you might pull something really cool off. And it's the coolest thing you ever did. And I seen it on the team, but I don't believe that you did it because you're not on the side lead app. Um, so it's really going to bring, it's going to make gamers more valid because it's a proof of basically their history of gaming. That's a, that's a really good point. Somebody could have made some like really miraculous shot or something. And if it wasn't done through here, people could discredit that and saying, well, you cheated. Yeah. Yep. Say so there's a, a pro player who's being accused of cheating maybe some, someone who's trying to go pro and he's kind of unpopular and uh, is continuously getting accused of cheating. Uh, you just say, okay, well, you know, play on this application and we'll see how well you do then. Uh, if he tries to cheat, but he'll be caught. But if he doesn't, you know, the stats will show up and he'll be able to prove that he's not cheating. So people can also use this application to clear their name. Being called a cheater, Question. Um, you can't take previous gameplays and run it through the AI, can you? Or does it have to be like you guys started a game with the application running? So there's two ways that that works. And we can't go into details. Um, one way is video recording it. Like you can upload anything to ML AI, all the data for a lot of YouTube videos is already out there. Uh, so yeah, you can train that way. Uh, but that gives you a lot of different variables. So when we want to be specific, we have to do it in a different way. Um, so when we're being way more specific for say the pro um, or a flagged user, that is a genuine created thing that Cyberlute has developed. So saying another way is um, we prefer live data like when you're playing a game and that's, you know, what we're primarily built for It's watching your current gameplay and we can record, we can analyze recorded video. Um, such on a game like Counter-Strike, you can record a gameplay and we can analyze through that. Now, if it's just a video on YouTube, we're not specifically built for video analytics right now, it's more for data. And, but it is something that we are working on towards. Okay, so it's it's for live data. So people, when if they want to play a game, and they want to show that they're legit, they're gonna to want to be on here, meet in here first, and then uh, start the game. Um, you guys mentioned something about NFTs um, and datapreneurs. Can you guys go into how that all sort of ties in. So we are going to use NFTs to gamify the experience for the competitor and casual gamer. So there's going to be things that NFTs are going to come in and do that like non fungible trophies. We're going to give trophies to competitors, how that's going to work, future thought, future, future stuff. A little bit is in our white paper about it. Um, now, like there's some crazy like 
things that we can do with NFTs. Like, mm, uh, there's just some crazy things we could do with NFTs that in a future conversation, I will go way more in detail because it is really, I love this topic, but I can't quite yet. Um, I will say that Web3 integration with a gamified experience will be on our platform. Um, it will take a little bit to get to that gamified experience, but it's in the coming future. So these NFTs that you guys are coming out, sounds like they're more like NFEs, non-fungible experiences that you can use in game or with your, with the platform you guys are going to release. Not necessarily. Let me explain a little bit. Part of the trophy system is when you go into the league and say you win open, your team wins the open league for uh, Call of Duty. Well, you get an NFT. The five, six players on the team all get an NFT, and it's a trophy. You know, it's a good job, well done, it's shiny, uh, all iced out, even. Well, this trophy has a benefit to it, basically. Um, and that'll do that for X amount of time before it expires. Uh, but not everyone. You know, that's that trophy only one team can win in that season. So it's dated and that's a uh, one utility of the trophy. Okay. Now how now this is a really good segue into the lead token because if they're producing more data, um, how does that benefit the user? Um and how does he become a datapreneur? How does the Leet token tie into this? Uh, can you guys dive into that a little bit? I'm going to start off by teaching people, you know, data is, is your time. Your time is worth money. Um, you know, there's companies, huge social media companies right now that are, you know, making billions and billions of dollars every year off everyone's data. And not one of us is getting a dime out of it. So if the goal is teach, you know, people onboarding that your data is worth something. It is worth something. Here's the reward for it. Um, we're using this data to train our AI so we can, you know, better secure the network for everyone so everyone can have fun. Um, in exchange for your data, we'll you know, reward your lead token. And these tokens can be used to buy, you know, merchandise off the website. Uh, maybe uh, later launch NFTs or a uh, subscription for something or, you know, various different things. This sort of reminds me of the DAG token, um, how the LEAP token is the index token to the Cyberly ecosystem. And so since the LEAP token is tied to data, the more data that's being ran through the network should um, Generative generative economics would say that the higher the lead token would go, the more data that's being ran through the network. Am I am I getting close here? Definitely be a lot more token out circulating, more data that's being pumped out. Because that's how the hypergraph is is structured. Uh, the more data that's being ran through the network. There are more, more nodes that are being used, the higher the price of DAG, because it's the index token for the entire ecosystem. So you okay. guys did something right. So you guys did something pretty crazy uh, with the tokenomics of Leet. And I don't know if people understand how big uh, this really is because you guys tied the Leet token to data. And you guys are taking a hundred, a minimum of a hundred snippets of data per second per user, uh, which is more user-generated data than Facebook. Right, and that's just on the gaming side. Right, and if if you guys see a user that might be showing some signs of foul play, and you guys need to collect a little bit more data from that user, you guys can go up to what was it, four hundred or four fifty or something per second. Yeah, fairly easy. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot of data. That's pretty huge. I also want to point out here, um, 
that the NFTs also are like they incentivize teams. So like, yeah, they like there are NFTs that'll be out there for the players, and they'll be for the casuals and the like the the people who are in in the competitive. There'll be a, a group of NFTs, but a lot of some of like the trophy system, it's it's to, it, it's to incentivize the competitive nature of that league for those players. So there is a goal, there is a championship, there is like a an NFL, an MLB type of like a basketball thing to it, like a sport thing to it, comparable. So if you're like, you know, I don't know, 16, 20 years old, and you have a group of people playing a game together, um, and you're all really good at the game, and each one of you think you have a chance to go pro, your friends think so too, uh, but getting there is kind of expensive. Uh, you got to go to a lot of tournaments. It takes a lot of time and practice and a lot of money. Uh, so this team is able to go on Cyberly and uh, through through basically the NFT, users or say their fans are able to stake into this team. And now this team is able to use that funding to go to maybe an online tournament or maybe even a land of it, like a local area event. Um, a couple states away or wherever that's going to help the team accelerate just by their community you know having a route to give them money directly it, and i'd like to say that like we can even offer teams an ability to like sell their merch for lead token so they can even you know truly incentivize their fans and culture to come on to and have this protected environment you can even set up their own shop and sell merchandise is what you what you guys are saying. Yep. Um, can we take this a step further? So you mentioned that players can organize, um, you know, let's say we have some influencers on here, someone with a decent fan base, and um, the other Cyber Elite members want to stake their Elite token into this uh, tournament. Let's say there's a let's say there's some beef going on between two influencers that are using this application. Um, members want to see them go at it head to head. So they decide they want to do a tournament. Uh, Cyber League members can stake their lead tokens. Um, and that could be part of the prize money. Um, you guys also use smart contracts. So how would these players go about creating a smart contract to deploy these funds once this tournament is over? Do you need to be some sort of you know dev or is the process really easy can you guide us through what that process looks like from a to z yes yeah. cool. it's pretty simple it's like a drag and drop process we made it really easy you know what's what's the game you're playing you type in that information how many people are are going to be at this event you know you type in thousand users um do you have any broadcasters fill out all this information and uh basically we make the contract for you after you've deposited your money say you want to put a you know ten thousand dollar purse out there or you put in your ten thousand dollars worth of lead and it's you know in the system now locked up in that smart contract and the players that win win a portion of that as, along with the uh broadcasters and such influencers it's all automatically paid out through a drag and drop process. It, and it, yeah, correct. And it's, it's to, it's to bring this Web three awesomeness to these communities that don't have it. So, like, there's a lot of which. Let's go to a smaller influencer instead of bigger influencers. Um, these communities, um, which just say you have 10, 15 people playing in games. Well, you can actually set these communities up and give like fair rewards and everything too for the smaller. So you can have these big influencers too, have these big events and people buying in and sponsoring in and staking their lead, raising the rewards. And you can also do the same thing for the smaller guy um, who's just starting or their community is just starting where you can actually just like help build with them instead of uh, everybody being limited in gatekeeping. And just to explain to some of the non-crypto people why this is so big is because smart contracts are obviously sophisticated. Your your average person does not know how to write a smart contract. 
usually that's developers, right? But what Cyber Elite did was create a very user-friendly application. Um, so they'll take the information that the users provide, like name, you know, all the stuff that they just mentioned, and they'll take that and create the smart contract for you guys. Uh, so they'll be doing all the coding. And why is why is it important that um, you guys are using smart contracts to send out rewards? Well, well, it becomes decentralized in a way. So it's not one centralized entity who's holding on to this prize money, um, determining when they want to pay you out or not. So when you guys do the smart contracts, uh, you as the group or you as the users will set the parameters um, on how things get distributed, right? Cor correct. And I'd like to say, to add to that, is they'll be paid automatically after the event. So say first place is now, you know, the smart contract reads first place is done and this is the person, he gets that money, he gets the purse, whatever that first place prize was, it's automatically given to these people. Uh, there might be some delay because there is, you know, like there is delay in some technology, but within a, you know, a period of time, everybody's paid and it's kind of instantaneously after that bracket is done. So how does that work through this web, through that UI design site that you guys showed us? Um, do people connect their like Stargazer wallet or MetaMask? Um, how, how does that work? So as of now, um, the Web3 integration is not visible. I can't show you the Web3 integration yet. Um, I will say that you will connect your MetaMask at first until we are in Constellation Network, which will then we would be in Stargazer. Um, but from there, you just connect and you will be able to just use the UI. It's very simple drag and drop, like Stolte had already said and uh, kind of confirm that that to us. You will be, um, the, the process is pretty simple. You, you take the information, it gets written um, uh, pretty much from a template. Yeah, and just to, you know, um, put a double underscore on that for people who are new to crypto that are watching this, it setting up a wallet is super easy. Uh, I'm pretty sure once they get that Web3 part integrated into their website, you'll probably just have to sign up, which is simple, like, you know, name, email, uh, and then they're going to provide you a wallet address. Um, and that's connected to the site. Um, and from there, it's it's literally, once they go to the L L0 standard on Constellation Network, you can literally send tokens uh, feelessly. And that's one of the benefits of Cyberly being built on the hypergraph over, let's say, the Ethereum network. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Ethereum gas fees and how, you know, sometimes we've heard atrocious numbers where, you know, one time I, I had like, I sent like 75 bucks to my Coinbase wallet and it cost me $350 to transfer it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. But the fact that they're building on the hypergraph um, they'll be able to move things uh, feelessly and very quickly. Which is a, one of the main reasons why we built our building on Constellation um, to give the the Web3 experience in its best, in the best experience we can offer. Um, we don't want everybody to be interacting with the Web3 and having to pay killer fees just to be doing stuff. Uh, it's not part of our gamify experience that we want to release for the application to stop working because i don't know a data server burned up because it was processing too much data it wasn't able to handle 100 snippets of data per second now it's trying to limit us to maybe 15 a second if i can add something small to that um for those of you guys who uh, haven't heard of constellation network um, you guys might have heard of blockchain technology, but Constellation uses a directed acyclic graph, which means the network gets faster the more users are using it. Um, so it's a scalable network. It's faster. It's cheaper. Um, and for those that you know might be worried about 
bottleneck issues or issues, for example, on Solana, how the network constantly crashes. Uh, well, Constellation Network is working with the DoD. Um, and so they built a network that cannot crash. Um, and so they're onboarding things slowly, but it's a scalable network. So you're not going to have to worry about, um, you know, the cyber elite network crashing or things getting throttled and slowing down and high gas fees. So um, I just wanted to highlight that really quick for, for people who might have like PTSD with Ethereum gas fees and Solana network crashes. I'd also want to add uh, a little key here. Um, state channels of Constellation are like, they're equivalent to smart contracts, but they're in fact like a mini DAG network. So like they ha like a state channel runs its own consensus and in turn is being validated by HTTP. So we like, in reality, we get a lot of logic here and, and it's not just like simple logic like Ethereum. So there's a lot more in depth stuff that like happens here on Constellation. I just want to point that out. Show my screen, but you know, you can download the app from our website. It's not uh, attached to the this current website right now, like I said, about the change servers. Um, but we do have a, it's a user interface that'll log into this app and basically the, it'll put a browser inside the app and uh, that's the Web3 experience. So there's a browser inside of an app. Those trending videos that are on the home page here, um, how do those get? To, how do you decide what videos are trending? Will you guys have ads, um, or is it just based on views? No, I don't remember exactly how this was programmed. I think it was based on views, most views for the week. I'd have to go back and double check. Yeah, I don't remember either. I think it is the most views. And as more people add, it's just whoever is the most viewed and then it goes through a group and there's you know, we can take it from two to like five and have those roll through what people are watching. Um mm -hmm. also would like to point out the forms over there. So that forms area is gonna like change a lot. Like this area is going to like, we'll have a form area, but also like we're updating this social experience to like this. So you're going to get like the form social experience like that, but in a 2022 way of, of it. So there'll be a way more social interoperability of uh, being able to talk, find your players, find like, there's going to be a lot, there's a lot we're doing. Um, and we can't release it all at once at the same time. So, and we don't want to rush this anything. It's just being worked on right now. This is front end part. And it's nearing finish. We're hoping to have it, you know, I'm testing it up by this weekend. Maybe uh, by next, uh, what, the 16th? So, next Discord AMA, we can uh, present that. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah ho hopefully, and be able to show some of the new, new stuff. Um, technically, we're coming to this place where the beta site is going to be pretty like it's going to be pretty awesome and uh we'll be able to you know do a lot of the things we're talking about and update it and grow with the community and show like yes yeah, this is most of the stuff is done already um oh yeah and this is some of the admin panels that he, he was just sharing so we can like manage the leagues and that's a lot of work to be able to manage and and have that like admin panel and so we can like help get help in, um doing this stuff because there is some human element to like being an admin uh there's article stuff a lot of the like news and, and stuff like that inside of esports is kind of gate kept it's kind of it's not it's not as free as it was back like back in the day um when there when there were websites devoted for these uh article writers um and I, I just love the fact that we have that stuff already built in. So through this, through this website, people are going to be able to stake their lead tokens. They're going to be able to join games. They're going to be able to 
um, get news. They're going to see other trending videos. It seems sort of like a one-stop shop um, that gamers can come to when they want to play a game um, and know that they're playing amongst people who won't be cheating. Correct. And and they're KYC'd, they're verified, they're biometrically verified too. So like they're, they're, we're, we're getting it to this point where they, we we are securing the user base because there's that many bots out there and that many people that are okay with cheating. And we're, and we just want a place where it's, there's nobody's okay with that. And this is that home. We're not okay with you taking, like, think about it in this sense. If you are playing a, a football game and you know, somebody's taking steroids, is that okay to you? And if it's okay, like, why is that okay? Like, why is it okay that they get to cheat or act malicious in a game that some people aren't doing that in? And instead, it's their true skill. It's their true speed. It's it's who they are as a human without those en enhancements. Um, and I think that's that's where we're trying to do with the, the league, and the anti-cheat and everything, is put this tone where we're about the gaming experience, but uh, like, but for the casual and the competitor and that home for the gamers, it's just verified. You bring up a good point. Uh, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with KYC, it's, it stands for Know Your Customer. Um, so what they're saying is users that want to use CyberLead, they're going to have to verify their ID. Um, and this prevents people from creating second or third, like burner accounts. Um, you know, so they, they try to tiptoe around the system. Um, so it'll be really tough. Uh, for you to try to to try to cheat using their platform. Yeah, you, no one wants to cheat if their actual name's attached to it. Yep. All these people who are cheating are using alternative names. So if they do get caught, they can just create another account and play again. Yep. And KYC yep. makes us makes you prove your identity and who you are. And and the biometric stuff does the same thing. It allows us to verify who's playing and when they're playing and how they're playing so it's pretty mm -hmm. cool it's also and, given confidence to the parents who children are on this application um it's going to give them confidence because they know that it's an actual person behind the screen they're not doing anything malicious and if they are you know, they can get reported and action can be taken it actually brings up a really good point so you guys will know who these users are. And if someone makes some sort of like, you know, threat or something along those lines and report it, you guys will know exactly who it is. Correct. And that gives, like, I want to like, highlight what Stolte just said there. He just said that we would have parental controls. That means people who are under the age of 16 will finally be able to educate their parents on what like what the system is so they can be involved um there's a lot of kids out there that are young right now that get involved and they can't even get the money that they're winning like they can't they can't even tap in because they're too young how much how much money has your son won that he's uneligible to claim like fifteen thousand dollars he's 11 years old and he can't he can't claim it he's too young but if he was on the cyber lead app the parent would be in the sponsor of the child and he'd be able to claim the money. Interesting. So there's like this huge di di dynamic of like educating everybody about esports. Not just like it's not just this like thing about it, like the tournaments and or like tournaments and, and, and events again. Like every other application that comes out, we're trying to build a huge economy ecosystem for the gamers and make this safe haven for everybody. So limit the toxicity limit the cheating and bring it back to the true sport like like everybody wants so essentially if i had a son or daughter like a 13 year old who in other platforms couldn't receive prize money but we went through the cyber lead application um me as the parent i could basically collect the prize money and give it to you know my son or daughter uh, through this platform right Right, exactly. Yep. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. For it, some of these uh, tournament organizers, it's the way they get to keep their money. And as a parent, I have that peace of mind too, knowing that you guys cap 
rewards at 40 hours per week. So if my child tries to play more than that, it, it, it incentivizes the kid to just keep it within the 40 hour, 40 hours per week. That's it does. Really. And yep. there's, you know, here's some stuff we never talk about, but it is, you know, we have incentives such as like, like homework, like your grades in school. Are you doing well? So, you know, maybe you'll get a, a bonus towards something. Maybe you'll get a, a special, you know, NFT, maybe the NFT is, you know, one of 100,000 or 200,000, but, you know, specific for that year. And there's, you know, these social activities that we want to incentivize. So, you know, you have, maybe you are someone that's peaked your 40 hours, but you want to continue earning rewards. And so you sign up to a, like a, I don't know, food donation thing and you donate time. Well, you should be able to turn that time into cyber get some credit. I feel like you guys are going to change the landscape of the gaming industry. Like, just imagine how many top influence influencers right now could possibly get dethroned when they find out that they were faking it. <laughs> you know, um, it could unless unless they come out and they're honest about it and say, "Hey, I'm cheating. I don't really care." But most of them don't really do that, right? Anything can happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, a show is a show. So however you entertain your, your communities, your, your choice. Just on Cyberly, we're not going to welcome cheating. So we'll, we'll know if you're, what you're doing um, eventually. And once we figure it out, I mean, sorry, sayonara. It is what it is. There'll be rules. And... Uh, Everybody will follow those rules. I love it, guys. Um, anything else you guys want to add? Want to add, like, to this, you know, the Sayonara part. Like, if we are certain that you've cheated and we've banned you, there is an appeal process. It is, you know, somewhat decentral. There is. You'd say a jury of members, but a random. You will be heard. Um, we'll provide the evidence that we have, and provide your evidence. And if there is a there is a way to you know get that off your record, and depending on how severe the cheat is, would depend on you know the length of time that you were banned. We're not saying if you cheat one time, you'll never come back ever again, because you know, we're all humans. Um, maybe some people didn't think cheating was a big deal. Maybe they're just, you know, raised into it. I mean, there is a, an expected learning curve to this. So we want to be fair with everyone. I, I expect, I think it's going to be really hard to state your case against your guys' AI. <laughs> but how do you guys choose your governance council? Is it just based on lead token holders or users, or is it chosen at random? How do you guys decide? Uh, just... it's, still being, it's still being discussed. We've thought about the thing, you know, having lead token. If you have X amount of lead token, you can have your vote in. But then, you know, that kind of creates whales, whale votes. Yeah. And so what we're discussing is what is the most fair way, like jury system, Everyone's got to do it. Like you just, if they need five people to help, they send out you know letters to a hundred people and they go look at their five people to help. Um, maybe that's something that we'll do. And if you participate, you get some kind of a uh, perk or, or something. Yeah, something cool. And I I like that better than holding token. And I think that. Um, any DAO type of scenario, you should separate, like, like our app token, Leet token is is our app token. It's the utility of our application. So, like, we don't want to in, intrude that utility with DAO stuff. Like, that's its its own separate thing, and it has its own purpose. So, you don't really want to do two stones and one bird with that. You'd actually want to create another token, and actually give those incentives and vote rights to that. 
So I love um, the jury idea where you just randomly send out a bunch of invites to people and you get a bunch of an opinion based on how many it's selected. And it could be the pros. It could be like any level of account to give their opinion. Um, obviously, more vetted accounts to give their opinion. And we can just you, you're essentially in front of your peers being voted on. And you guys said that people are going to have different pro scores based on uh, their data, right? So like how legit they are. Um, maybe it could be based on people's pro scores, um, gaming activity. Um, yeah. Kind of no, strike has just... an interesting way of taking their, their jury. Um, so if they think someone's cheating, someone's been reported enough times, they'll send a replay of the cheater out to a bunch of people and every time you open up counter-strike you can click you know watch evidence video uh and at the end of the video you're able to vote is he cheating or not and if he was what was he doing um uh, just you know similar to that got it um <clears throat> yeah that was a really really in-depth um interview we did today guys um if anybody has a question feel free to unmute um and fire away and for those of you guys that joined a little bit later uh, this is being recorded and you'll be able to watch the full interview on the youtube channel so make sure you guys subscribe turn the notifications on um so yeah if you guys have any questions uh don't be shy. Feel free to unmute and fire away. I don't really have a question, but you guys um, commented on how a lot of people, or at least some people, will probably be dethroned when this, when uh, Cyberleaf's anti cheat software is being used. Um, and it's definitely true. It's because I've personally listen to interviews done by cheating companies, the malware providers, and they admit to having pros, multiple pros on as customers. So there are famous streamers and professional players getting paid six figures to seven figures a year who have built an empire out of cheating. So it is going to mix stuff up it's going to restructure everything when cyber Elite comes out. And that's why it's so important, so important for them to <clears throat> be here in the space. I kind of agree with that too, especially if cyber Elite gets that network effect that we think it's going to have. And a lot of people are starting to migrate over and playing through the cyber Elite app. If they're one of the few that don't want to do it, it's going to raise a lot of eyebrows. People are going to be like, well, why don't you want to play on cyber Elite? What are you hiding? Right. Um, especially those guys who will deny it to the like to the end. I'm not cheating. Um, the, it's yeah, going to start to raise a lot of questions because there there are even really good cheats that are. It's crazy. They, these are for streamers and anyone who is being watched. You can have it <clears throat> not showing anything. Like it'll show different things on the screen than what are actually happening. Even so, that way streamers can be on stream cheating and no one will know any better so but that's why something like cyberly would come in because it's not about what people see on the screen it's entirely deeper than that it's about having the machine the ai <clears throat> knowing exactly what's going on through machine learning one of my favorite kind of cheats that people use is like a radar cheat and uh they'll use another monitor for this so they'll be playing on their main monitor streaming from that and then their monitor above or to the left will have a radar of the game. And uh, so it's not even attached to the computer. It's like a separate, a separate computer with its own monitor running the radar. Wow. And uh, that's one of the most common ways these pros, pro uh, streamers are, are cheating. Interesting. They're getting more and more creative. Pretty crazy. All right, guys. Uh, if that's... If uh, there's no more questions, I uh, appreciate everybody for joining us for this week's AMA. Um, next Monday, I believe it's Cyberspaces on Twitter. Is that right?
Yes, sir. And we'll have Finavant on there um, as a guest speaker. We'll be going over the different technologies. Um, and then the following Wednesday after that, we will have a Discord AMA with Finavant as well as we take a deep dive into both technologies um, and discuss how the partnership benefits um, and how they can be interoperable. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us today. And again, if you guys haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you guys go uh, and subscribe on there, turn notifications on. Um, and we, we look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. Appreciate it.